No, because uh, they were killing voids. I can't remember. Maybe I'm thinking of the game we just watched. Oh my gosh. Can't remember. Oh my gosh, I probably shouldn't drink this much coffee. I probably shouldn't, Kevin. This much coffee and TI-70? No, I mean, no, that's the thing, is that when I was standing up, like, I haven't had very much coffee today, but, like, mm -hmm. when I was standing up, like, my, my heart was, like, pounding. I was, like, <laughs> so excited. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Virtus Pro versus Execration Drafts have started. Let me refresh this page and see if our EG friends have done anything yet. Let's hop back in. Yeah, once again, I mean, we're seeing the same sort of call-outs from Infamous, Dark Seers, Obnoxious to Lane Against, Earthshakers. <laughs> he did quite well. He did, yeah. Uh, no Nature's Profit ban, which I pointed out earlier. Which felt odd. Yes. I also have the, the game open up on stream. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably... Uh, no, I guess it's all encoding limiter. You're not you're not limited by internet. I was going to... No, this, this is... Right now, the choppiness that um, we are witnessing is the in-game's optimization in Dota 2 is choking. That's what's happening. And I have a monster of a computer. Um, so this is just uh, an inefficiency in this particular screen. So I apologize for that <laughs> FPS. Because if I actually go out of this, it should. Oh yeah, yeah I mean, see, it's, it's, like, it's smooth it's online. Like way better. <laughs> but I'm also not streaming at the same time. I totally understand. Yeah, no, it looks super smooth on my screen. It's okay. choking on my encoder. Uh, and I'm getting instantly the hell out of... Um, this game once EG IG starts. Probably safe to do. Can monitor it as well. I'll just watch on yours. I do enjoy the choppiness. I know. Legion, it's good. Legion Commander's kind of early. It's, do you think uh, so? Yes, kind of. It was it was more seen as OP around um, Kiev. Kiev uh, Legion was one of the stronger heroes. Most picked, yeah. Don't think she got nerfed significantly, if at all, though. Don't think she did. Maybe an item she buys or something. I don't think so. By the way, guys, for any of you trying to give feedback or advice on the encoding, it is literally just that this is unoptimized. Like this, I have super awesome, great encoding setups right now. Um, you know, it makes sense. This is the first time this thing's ever been in there. There's a few things that really choke the shit out of uh, an encoder. Like, whenever you do Crystal Maiden's spin to win. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You ever open or look at one of those chests that has, like, a hundred sets in it? So it it'll just... animate every single character spinning slowly in a circle while changing their animation? It's that so shit bad. messes you up, too. Basically, opening any treasure chest is just not good. I'm surprised to see Viper getting uh, bans so frequently. Um, He's been really popular right now as a mid-hero. Um, he basically didn't get touched. I don't think he got any buffs or nerfs. In it was a while. when VP won BTS doing only different heroes and was like choosing Viper and shitting on people was the first time I saw. But I don't think they did Viper every game. I think they just did it once. They did every hero once. Yeah, they did every hero once, but it was like after that I actually started to see him. Okay. Oh, EGIG just got picked up. Bye. All right, guys, go watch that on another stream because I got a cheer for the boys in blue. Uh, just so all of you know, I have a very clear bias towards Team Liquid and Evil Geniuses, as they were some of the OG Brood War teams. Was EG sponsoring back in Brood War, though? Mm -hmm. Did the, was uh, did Idra get picked up by EG bef when he was still playing Brood War, or was that once he transitioned to SC2? I can't remember. Um, I cannot remember. Idra was on CJ Entis. I remember Korean that. Team, but I... You know, I think they... I feel like it was SC2 only. Uh, I mean, they were certainly sponsoring um, Machine and LZ Gamer yeah. and Control. Yep. That was all SC2, though, because I, I only really started watching StarCraft during well, SC2. It's so hard for me to remember, because, I mean, I think that, like, Idro may have been on EG and then joined CJ Antis and then came back to EG or something, but, I mean, like... I mean, th that yeah. group was really tight with, like, you know, Jeff and Bryce... Gotcha. Jacob and uh, Greg all 
Yeah, I don't. I don't really know anything before before SC2. So you might be more right than me. But they were definitely the, the one of the the big uh, SC2 like, brand. I'd love it if you time. assume that was more right. That feels. I mean, it feels good. It's good I mean, to hear. You, you know slightly more about StarCraft and the StarCraft Two scene than I do, so I think it's <laughs> definitely safer to take yeah. your word for. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Kitten tail. So the the ban on Wisp is always really interesting to me because of the fact that it's so rarely picked in pub mm -hmm. matches. It's one of those things that demands a pretty intelligent team coordination, I think. Well, did we see any of that out of EG last game? I think we did, right? We did. <laughs> All right, can, Despy, can I get a... Meow? That's Damn, my girl. That, that's that's my girl. Did you have to train that into her? No, she just constantly is screaming. See, look at this. Despy, hey! <laughs> such a good cat. <laughs> my dog does that too, it's, except it's when she gets scared or uh, hears a weird noise. That isn't oh, me. Oh, awesome. It's much like yeah. me. That's when I was. I, I didn't even have to train it. If you're happy and you tray it, then go meow. Five Weaver Kunkka. Oh, I think I found a way to glitch the frames per second higher. That's great. Oh, what did you do? Um, I Hold changed that. the screen priority. So. Okay. Encoder tricks. Yeah. Okay, I know very little about encoding. I am familiar with the word. That's um, about the extent. So Pugna's banned. Nice. Sometimes you can trick your processor to uh, encoding on a different thread depending on which screen has priority. Okay, that helped a little. I think we should stop so, there. So you have a processor, like if you have an 8-core processor yeah. uh, or something like that, or a 4-core processor, it means that you can do multiple different things at the same time. Maybe one processor is in charge of running your game, another processor is in charge of encoding on your computer. And if something isn't um, threaded properly, it will often not make, make use of additional processors. So for instance, yep. early game encoding, or not encoding, excuse me, early game code would sometimes utilize two processors, but that's it. Mm -hmm. And there would be a smart way to collapse everything down to one processor if your computer only had the one. Uh, but you know, multiple cores is, is common um, these days. Yep, but, but sometimes, I, I remember that period where your processor wouldn't be able to actually utilize all of your cores because of the ways the games are programmed, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, and in fact, let me see if I can, let me try not to dox myself over here. All right, here, everyone look at my face. Let me show, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying very hard not to dox myself, making sure that nothing is, if I can do it like this. Let me, you can do something like properties. Set affinity. Yeah, so like you, you would do this. So this is talking about where mm -hmm. Dota 2 is allowed to use which thread. So sometimes, you know, you would have to uncheck certain processors uh, for the game and then check certain processors for the encoder. So that way it would do its single and double threading of the uh, of one processor. Or excuse me, it would do the single or double threading of a single process on different processors. So you could say, like, Dota 2 is going to be on 1 through 4, and my encoder is going to be on 5 through 8. I understand. That helps more. And therefore, in other words, sometimes if things are unoptimized, uh, doesn't have to mean this, but sometimes it can mean that it is not properly using additional processors and everything's being dumped onto one single processor. And it gets laggy because it can't keep up at the right FPS. Yeah, yeah. As well. And that's why you guys are here. Yeah, isn't that great? Sean's encoding tips. Sean teaches purge PC encoding. Yeah, basically, if you have to do any of that shit, just buy a better computer, man. Just get, just, just chuck your computer out. <laughs> My FPS is 30 in the draft screen. Worthless. Throw it out. So, now, th these are some... Okay, so if I look at the bands, Puck, Wisp, Pugna, Necrophos, very popular heroes at this point in time. Nyx is very popular, Night Stalker is very popular, Tidehunter is just great in team fights, uh, you know, Silencer is great in team fights. Uh, but, you know, so I look at Batrider, I look at Earthshaker, I've been seeing these heroes crop up a lot. Um, Earthshaker, obviously, we've talked about some of his values in the previous games, but what the hell with the Weaver and the Kunkka pick one and two? I think Weaver is safe, is one of the reasons I do picked it. It can lane against a lot of matchups. Um, they picked Kunkka as a Batrider counter, because if Batrider jumps and lassos an ally and you X your ally, then you can pull him back to where he used to be before Batrider started pulling on him. That's why Kunkka's good here. Um, 
Oh, EG, interesting. EG banned both silencer and tide under because once they do initiate, they don't want to deal with a crap load of team fight because global silence that follows up after bat rider ulti can limit your ability to kill the guy that you lasso, and tide ravage kind of does the same. So they're cr trying to keep like some team fight advantage over their opponents. They do actually oh. pitch like NP. So it seems like NP has been a hero either publicly or in scrims in the last month or so. Um, and I feel like they can use that to punish lanes really well if they want. That is a very fast response to snatch up Centaur War Runner. Mm -hmm. They probably had it planned. You know, uh, characters like Centaur War Runner are ones that I, I never quite know how to think about because, I mean, I know what Centaur does, but, I mean, he's a great... He's a great body, has a lot of durability, he has a stun, he can deal a little bursty damage, he can make everyone run real fast. But how does that fit into a team? This is going to be my question for you for almost every hero, is how the hell does that fit into a team? Uh, it depends on the lane matchup, obviously, but um, you can think of his ultimate. Um, does it help his team evade a dangerous situation that happens? Because um, then everybody could run away. Um, does it allow them to... Like, for example, if he has Ags and somebody gets lasso pulled up a cliff, then Centaur can use this Stampede, and those heroes can run down and over cliffs and through trees and stuff, so that part's kind of cool. That could be maybe one of their thoughts. Fast but, question about yeah. the Batrider Kunkka interaction. If you X marks the spot and immediately pop it, does mm -hmm. it exit the lasso? It only exits lasso if you moved a certain distance. So if they quickly separate themselves by too far of a distance, then it will break it. So you have to let them be pulled, like a couple hundred units, like 300 or 400 units before you can jump okay. it back. That's the same reason why Batrider doesn't force staff in, lasso somebody, and blink back with the person, because it would also break the lasso. So, at, at this point in time, um, Visage is a super interesting hero. Also, Cat Butt, you gotta, you gotta chill. What position is um, Visage being played in? Almost always support. In pubs, sometimes you'll see him mid or cores, but it's not really seen as a good thing. It's just kind of like a it works and it's pub stompy. Yeah. Um, it's most likely going to be... I think Zai and Crit historically did both play Visage, but I think it'll be Zai playing it. I, might, and, I could be wrong, though. Yeah, I mean, like, the, Bat Rider I see in the offlane, um, mm -hmm. and Support, or Shaker I see in the offlane and Support. Visage I see as Support. Nature I see in the offlane. But I think that... Do you think it's... It seems reasonable to say that there's almost too many, oh, baby cat, do not hit those buttons. Okay, cool. My cat is trying to sleep upon my keyboard. See, I got my little kitten there. Yep, say hi to, say hi to everyone. Dispy, Make a noise. Yeah, fuck you too. Um, the, what were we talking about? I'm so upset at this cat. This cat is not performing right now. Oh yeah, but I do you think that Nature's Prophet mid would be uh, a possibility here, given that Earthshaker and Batrider could absolutely be offlane in this game. It's, it's possible, uh, but generally not recommended because Nature's Prophets, uh, he, he's very good at laning, but one of his benefits is teleport, obviously. So if you teleport somewhere else to participate in a fight, you don't want to leave all the free farm and experience in the mid lane. So usually you'd want to be safe lane Prophet, offlane Prophet. Okay. Uh, and then you show up to help another lane and you don't like screw your team over. Because if you're safe lane Prophet and you leave, your support's there and it's like, oh, hell yeah! Free last hits and experience. Okay. So Lena is mid... It could also be offlane. It's probably also, Despy is mid right now. Mm -hmm. What a good cat. Despy, I want you to look right into the camera. Right, um, very close. Uh, an important comment about your confusion, though, is this is a lot of what EG did. The first three picks they had could all be offlane heroes. Yes. Just to make it harder for IG to predict what their lanes are going to be and therefore have less time to think about what their matchups will be and things like that. So there's a lot so, of like mind game stuff you can do. So we have Sumail certainly going to be in mid with Lena. That would be what we would expect probably, yeah. most of the time. Mm -hmm. We would expect that... Visage, Bat Rider, Earthshaker will likely constitute the two supports. Or, I, I don't know. Look, let me it's say not going to be Bat Rider, probably. But. Bat Rider's probably not the carry. Visage is probably not the carry. I mean, is this... It's going to be NP, almost for sure. Hard carry NP. This is what I mean, I'm fucking talking about. It's, again, you, assigning the words hard carry to it is fitting the lane to the role when it's more like... NP is more of like a gank push, team fight, carry hero. It's like a lot of yeah. different. Does a lot of things. You know, let me let me reformulate what you're saying, which is that a lot of people think about the lane is the position, and therefore who is going to go into what lane, and it's, therefore what box do I typically put that person in? Like Phantom Assassin tends to go to the safe lane and be the hard carry that wins the fights at the end of the game, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't say. 
put nature's profit in the what in the shit RTG, RTZ visage. Yeah, it's a, it's a carry visage, I guess. I, 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 it happens all the time. It's fucking confusing. Crit's playing support. Like, shit's weird, dude. It, Batrider did play some support last year at TI. Uh, I believe, I remember Zhao Wei doing a lot, but it ended up getting nerfed, I think, as a support. In a, in a couple different ways, yeah. Um, you know, shit's when's... weird. They might swap, too. They could be doing mind games just to mess with their opponents. I think How long is the swap period? I don't know if you can do it anymore with the new way that you pick heroes, but you used to be able to do it. You could, like, pick heroes to oh maybe try to trick them and then swap, like, right before the timer runs out. Dude, that way the... they're expecting different matchups. That set on Lena is... Mm, yeah. That is a good fucking set. Look at the Iron Man heart. That, that item's expensive. It's, like... 50 bucks right now or some 70 bucks, I don't remember. Play with the most kills at 10 minutes. Oh, if at first you don't stop learning, take an opportunity to fucking learn. It's some mail. For a team with the first barracks kill, EG. Which team will win, EG? Which player gets the longest uh, kill streak? Uh, all right, it's a, it's a very Samele day. This is the easiest predictions I've ever seen. <laughs> I think I it has very, very obvious uh, determinations, in my opinion. So I'm kind of curious how Crit does this as support Batrider. Um, Definitely going be for weird. the sticky napalm, which is nice. It's going to have yes. a very minute impact on the movement slow early, but that turn rate slow 70%. If you've never had this happen to you, I want you to imagine running away and needing an extra four seconds to rotate. It's like any time you make a decision, you can opt to stun yourself or not, but it's up to you, and it feels so bad, which is why I really um, struggle against... Oh, that's such a beautiful skin. Uh, this is also why I have historically struggled against Bat Riders when I've been a carry, is I try to turn around and start running, and he gets three, four, mm -hmm. five extra little whacks off. And you'll note that that is a 20 mana spell, and he has 340 mana. So. And so three second cooldown, too. You can stack a lot of Napalm on people. Yeah. But you don't even need to. You get one, and the turn rate slow is in there, and you can yes. begin getting harasses off. And of course, they take marginal extra damage for your right, uh, from mm -hmm. your right clicks. So the, I think the question is, what are these supports on IGV side going to do? And the answer is maybe kill Kunkka, or uh, crit. Oh yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. A stun, a stun, and a stun. Having fun and fun and fun. This is a little tricky by, by IGV that they had two supports up here. It's not expected. Um, and they did get the first blood, but that means that Universe is going to get more out of the first or second wave if they don't teleport yeah. down. Um, so it can have negative consequences if they're worried about their offlane player. And uh, Nature's Prophet is like one of the best offlane heroes for yeah. like mess, like pressuring their opponent because the trans do so much damage. So this could genuinely hurt um, IGV. But shutting down Visage is a big important thing because this hero sucks at level one and a couple early levels. So this could really pay off here. Yeah, I mean it's the level tens uh, and fifteens that are significant. The fifty damage on fifteen, as we see, it works well with Lena. That's not really the reason why he's strong though. It's more like he needs at least his ultimate to become a useful hero and he has a low base yeah, armor and magic bird. resistance so he needs gravekeeper's cloak as well that's like a mix of a bunch of things his animation sucks his damage is low his spells don't do that much until later with a lot of points so it's, it's a mix of issues well it's been really interesting to watch eg's style where it's a very sumail centric style the fact mm -hmm. that sumail is very aggro and goes ham all the time which means that you know arteezy often does not have the best opening to his games, but then gets these huge windows, and because he's such an efficient farmer, he's able to get a big gain. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Universe is dumpstering paparazzi right now. Eight and two versus one and one. That's actually <laughs> ridiculous. Dumpstering is the most appropriate term here. <laughs> he is absolutely hurting you know him. Universe uh, is from the same city as me. What city are you from? Say without um, doxing Madi yourself. Madison, Wisconsin. Holy shit! We've had this conversation like six times. Uh, I remember it every time you tell me you're from Madison. But dude, I used to play Ultimate Frisbee in Madison, man. Oh. Yeah, that was pretty popular there. I remember that. We went to different... I think he's a little bit younger than me. And he went, we went to different high schools, but... Uh, fun fact. Yeah, dude. Midwest he, represent. I think he's the t most uh, highest <gasps> ranking eSport player of all time right now, too. Who got that, Kurt? Uh, it, Smail. Okay. He's gonna die. Oh shit. Oh, maybe he'll get a double kill. Alright, this is a double. Self? No. Oh, I think if he salved, he gets a kill, a double there. Honestly. Oh, and there it is. Oh, yes! That works too. Yeah, 
Honestly, the universe is so good, though. Yeah, he is one of Super my absolute player. favorite players of all time. He has really low deaths on average, too. So, he, like, I, I think it's easy to underrate him sometimes because he isn't extremely flashy. Um, but but that's part of what's great about it is that he he allows his cores to maybe play more aggressive, and he doesn't have like boomer yeah. bust games. He just always does well, pretty much. The only time he ever historically did bad was on secret, but a lot of people blame that on like team composition of playstyles more so than universe being a bad player. God damn, he's so fucking good, man. And now he can just TP back to the bot lane. Oh, he's TPing mid. Do you know why he's doing this? I guess to get the rune and then to farm and get the rune? Um, yes, but also because if you look at where the safe lane is, it's kind of dangerous for him to be in lane yeah. now. Plus, Weaver has a couple levels. Oh, I see. So, like, level 1 Weaver is really easy to bully. He has awful stats, and he needs, like, Sakuchi's an ultra long cooldown at level 1. But yeah. now, if a support shows up and Weaver's there with level 4, he could easily die. So, he's, like, mixing in his lane dominance with his ganking now, and now he's just going to jungle because it's, it guarantees he doesn't die while still oh. get some decent farm. Going straight for Drums of Endurance, which is an item that I increasingly I actually understand and appreciate because, you know, when I used to play Nature's Prophet, I was a completely new player, and I had no no semblance of subtlety in the slightest. Mm -hmm. I would just... I wanted to get big, huge items. That's why I love Dr. Core so much. It's like, look at my stats, my spells come back faster, ah, the power. The Sprout. The sprout more often. <laughs> Six second cooldown on Sprout, guys. It's permanent. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, this cat that's... is so asleep. And see, this is this is the thing. Like, Arteezy didn't seem like he was going to have a good time early on, and now he's just literally alone. Yeah. I, I didn't watch that lane too much, but, uh, for example, just the, the first kill that happened with the TP. Now yeah. people don't want to be up there, because they know that if um, Earthshaker is there, then it's going to be, you're going to get Fissure blocked, you're going to be against a Visage, and Prophet's going to show up. Oh my god, Sakata's really good. I mean, Zai's really good, but Scott is really good. Very interested to see what the itemization is going to be on Visage. I can't decide between Visage and Visage, so I just say whatever I think is cooler at the time. I can't. I think he says Visage. I, I, I'm like 90% I, I sure it's Visage, but Me. if it's Mirage, it's Visage. You know what I'm saying? I'm check his voice lines. That's usually... Usually the hero says says their name at least once. I used to have thought... I, I thought for sure that it was... Um, Abaddon, but he actually says Abaddon, so... Yeah, I, I vastly prefer... Oh my god, Sakata got the kill in mid. <laughs> nice dog fights. Oh, I'm sorry, Despi, I didn't mean to spit on your face. Sometimes when I get excited, I speak with my saliva. The only person that suffers from that is the baby cat. So, his responses, there we go. Yeah, I mean, there's some words that I know I'm not pronouncing correctly, but I just like the way that I'm pronouncing them. He says visage. What a loser. Visage is weird. Visage sounds so much cooler, man. It's, it's, yeah, it sounds, it sounds like it was like a French word that is now in the English language. That's that's what it would be if if that was the correct Hello, word. Hello, this is a visage. The, the coolest thing right now is his skill build, actually. He's maxing Gravekeeper's Cloak first. Um, and the way that this works right now is that if you take more than 50 damage from an attack, then it will apply the damage reduction to it. So like weak creep hits or spells that do damage over time aren't actually good against it anymore unless the damage over time is high enough to yeah. deal over 50, in which case the charge is blocking. And then they recover at a faster rate with more levels. So he should be able to sit in his lane getting items and farm and not die. Well, I mean, especially given the fact that the double edge deals such a huge burst of damage. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's just the natural trigger in yep. that lane. And then War Runner will take more damage than he does from it. Gosh, Queen of Pain is 24 last hits behind Sumail. A level behind Sumail. Holy shit. This could be very bad. This could be very, very bad. Oh! <laughs> what a turnaround by IGV! Uh, I think I that might be a very dead universe. It's gonna be close, actually. Yeah. That was, that was a good move. It was it was hard for both of them to kill each other. Yeah. The Sprout TP was was solid, but yeah, it was, it was still worth pressuring for Paparazzi because he could just time lapse back and not lose anything, except for time. In the meantime, Crit's just been jungling is another important thing. So he's just trying to like catch up from a support position just by killing creeps. So it's kind of kind of limits EG's ability to make these first these early yeah. ganks work. But I mean that's that's really nice. If we take a look at the hero levels, smells dead again. 
Oh. They're doing a, IGV's doing really well now. And this is where having crit be a support is really, really screen EG. Because yeah, like I one mean, more hero on some of these, they'd win the fight every time. Their engagement. He's, he's very close to six, which I suppose will permit more opportunity to. Yeah. More action, but he's but... still he's still got to walk in and lasso people, so it's still hard. Yeah. Plus, Arteezy's not going to leave his lane, although he'll send bats now. So now what they might do is share the bats, and then somebody like Zai will control the bats while ganking. So he'll basically be Earthshaker plus familiars, while Arteezy continues to last hit creeps. I don't think a lot of teams do this, but it's uh, it's always something that's been theorycrafted, just nobody ever does it, especially not on the pro scene. Oh god, get out, get out of here. I don't want to see that. Uh, longest kill streak, most kills at 10 minutes, well... Well, I'm fucking wrong, dude. Smail, if you don't catch up with those kills, you know what, it's okay. Because I'm oh, not okay. one of those kids that gets real upset about my imaginary bets. He's died four times, that's that's a lot. Died four times, and of course, if we look at the last hits... Still, better than I do at 10 minutes. It's really tough against Konka, though. So once you get X, you're pretty much committed. Plus, Quap can blink away. It's like, almost no matter what, Quap can get away if wanted. If desired, that is. Oh, it's easy actually rotated for this, too. Yep, and uh, now they just kill towers. Because that's what their characters do. <laughs> this is an EG special, man. They do not, like, mess around with tower pushes. They don't do it sloppy. They, they do it when they know that they're going to kill it. And goodbye, gold advantage. Almost. I mean, it's, it's not in their favor. They're technically winning. And they killed mid-tower. Which means Quap is not going to have a safe little place to farm. Or get levels. And more areas for them to smoke through. So, yeah, that basically just opened up the game heavily for EG. Now, what I'm curious about is... How Vitality is going to progress in the mid-game. Because, like, looking through, I mean... There's nice opportunities to get pick-offs with Weaver. Pick-offs with the Shackles and Centaur War Runner. But EG just looks like they're so set up to just push the shit out of towers so hard. Yeah, that's true. Um, I would say that IG is... They don't have too much worry about dying when they push lanes, at least, for now. Because it's uh, there's no oh, blink on bat point. yet. Yeah. Or Earthshaker. So they can't really stop them from split pushing. It's just like, if EG shows up with five years at a tower without IG Vitality expecting it, that tower is going to die. But as long as IGV split pushes lanes pretty effectively with like Weaver and Quap, then they'll be okay. And their supports are good at pushing too, both Kunkka and Shadow Shaman. So I think they've got options here. They just gotta keep the lanes pushed a lot and not get caught unawares by EG like they did in the mid push. And at this point in time, it's still like super, super close. But God, you're right, dude. EG hates towers. Uh oh. Well. <laughs> and now that's used defensively, which means that they're in the same situation as before. Oh, he could have gone in dogfights. Yeah, Sumail's a little worried right now. He knows he's pretty far behind. I was on crit. Just pops in a heartbeat. Oh, it might kill in July. Nope. Ooh, if he gets X'd. Yeah, he's Ortiz is caught. Oh, maybe not. God, that hero's so slow, actually. Queen of Pain reveals herself. Weaver's coming in, though. They know Weaver's there, but down goes dogfights, and can Arteezy manage to get the kills? Oh my god, that is so annoying! Arteezy is unbelievably close to death, and it looks like he's just giving it up. Yeah, he's definitely gonna die here. This hero's not very fast. Well... Okay, he didn't lose his familiars, which is good. So, if we look at the fight recap, it was pretty even. A lot of experience going to IG Vitality. Do you remember when we looked at the graph the other day? Or, like, the equation? Yeah. Like, look at the gold advantage. It's, like, actually nothing for EG, but they get that much more experience out of that. I mean, it was them killing a mid and a carry instead of just a yeah uh, mid support, but I guarantee those numbers wouldn't be so extreme if it wasn't um, an advantage. EG is also much higher level, so that's the other reason. Yeah. I'm not sure why that is, actually. Is it that way? Or is, oh no, that's Radiant, actually. IGV's way ahead. That makes sense. Because they haven't grouped as 5 as often. 
Yeah. Ten kills to six. Oh, doing a little tummy time with the baby cat. I mean, this this bottom tower needs to go soon. This will help a lot with pushing into Radiant Yungle. How far is Crit from any mobility? I mean, he, he is like nowhere near yeah. a blank or four staff. That's what happens when you're playing support and you're jungling most of the time and not getting free kills. Oh He's god. Scream of Pain just deals so much, <laughs> so much damage to the trees. <laughs> Oh, feels yeah. terrible. Uh, the treants don't have magic resistance anymore. They used to maybe like a like two years ago, but they got removed. So that's one of the weaknesses is that you can feed a lot of gold to your opponents. I'm just seeing Smail's going for the 80 light strike array damage. Helps clear waves faster, but I gotta say I really like the range. Like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I like not having to get an octarine mm -hmm. core to shoot things from afar. Yeah. Ooh, that could have been denied. That's okay, nobody was there. Um, Arteezy going for a hood first. There's a good amount of magic damage on that enemy team. And if you lower the damage that they deal with a hood, then it lowers the chance of Gravekeeper's Cloak proccing. That's the other cool thing about it. Um, I found that like if Visage gets like a hood, I think then Radiance Burn doesn't actually proc Gravekeeper's Cloak because it gets reduced under the 50 mark. There's oh, a lot of things like that that, are, that you can uh, theory craft out that make the hero a lot more valuable. Oh, did I say Octarine Core meant Aether Lens? Thank you, humans. I meant Aether Lens for the uh, range. Aether Core. They're gonna Start go combining mid. words together, like Magic the Gathering, just make up my own items. Oh, see you later, Lena. Dude, Sumail dies so quickly, and Zai's gonna yep. get caught and blowed up. He's gonna throw down the Echo Slam, but I don't think that's gonna do much, but from above. Oh, hi! Oh, it's Arteezy, hello! Uh-oh. Gets shackled. All the wards get thrown down. Ugh. All I could do is just wince. It's tough, man. This, this is the problem with Lina. If you just go on her with a hero like Kunkka, it's so easy. Yeah. Gives you like five seconds to try to kill her, and she <sighs> she's gonna be stunned most of the time. Oh my god, this cat is so fucking cute. Um, Dude, Urshaker. Universe does not want to let this tower live. Just like insta drums of endurance, man. Oh man, Sumail's only getting me five fantasy points right now. Isn't that sad? That is really sad, actually. Okay, well, my cat, I think, is sitting up so she can sit in a different position. Okay, yeah. You know, get comfy. Let me just move your butt a little bit. There we go. We have some serious cat problems here, man. Sounds like it. My dog's been dead on the floor this whole time. So I am, like, totally absorbed in this game, but I briefly want to refresh and see what some of the other results are. Actually, let me just wait for a moment of free time. I mean, they're getting pick after pick, man. Mm -hmm. This seems like such a great time to do it. There's, like, no good mobility items on EG. They can just waltz right up. X. Oh, they got Lena again. Oh, my God. Blink on Centaur War Runner. If it was the other way around, if EG was winning, then um, it'd be really easy for them to probably get kills themselves and to just push towers all the time. But because those first couple engagements went so bad, it just if, if IG puts their heroes in the right place, it's very, very easy for them to kill EG. They don't really have a good frontliner either. I think that's one of the reasons that having Urshaker makes sense because he helps stop the enemy team from just running at you. But a lot of the time they're like smoking into position and yeah. taking good angles to gank and it makes it easier to um, be successful with your ganks. And now there's Blink on Centaur, so pretty much everything is just... Yeah, Blink on Centaur just feels so horrible if you're EG right now, man. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much in at a position where it's very difficult for EG to do what they want to do until they at least get a Blink on Bat or, or uh, the uh, Earthshaker. So, I mean, Blink on Earthshaker, Blink on Bat Rider obviously going to be amazing for initiating or picking off heroes, but what about on the other three, like Arteezy, Lena, and Universe? Like, what are the items they're looking for? Um, you can see that Arteezy's building Ags. Um, Ags would give him three familiars, which mm -hmm. increases his damage. Um, Lena is going to go Bloodstone now after Yules. The, you go phase Yules usually so that you have a higher chance of surviving early game. Yeah. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Zygo's Blink, obviously. He's actually quite close. Barretta goes Blink. 
and Prophet is building an Orchid just to help have it more disable and stuff like that. So they're, they're basically just kind of crappy until they get a Blink Dagger. Um, once they get them, it'll take good team fights to be effective because Centaur has better initiation. So it's it's pretty tough for them right now, honestly. So I mean, right now, I mean, this this is the period of time where it's it doesn't feel great to jungle, but it's sort of what you have to do if you're EG. Um, yes, because you don't want your opponents to know where you are in a lot of cases. Yeah, I'm always impressed at how conservative players play when they're like trying to push out lanes. Because here's where I would die if I was Nature's Prophet. I'd be like, mm -hmm. oh, no, I know. Oh, kill creeps. here, maybe kill another lane over there. Yeah, no, Chris, oh, I found them. I'm incredible. Hey, Amen. Gotta gotta be aware where they might gank from. He's gonna use the trance to try to deny this, maybe. He's not gonna get it. And they kill Zai. That was such a good gank too, because he was right. He was just trying to form Blink Dagger. <laughs> Dude, like, I did not even see it. I mean, I, I didn't catch it either. But like, look look where the creep wave. Look where he died. If you double tap his uh, his hero icon. Yeah. He's like, oh, this should be safe, right? He should be okay to farm here. He's only 300 gold away from his Blink Dagger. He's probably only like 200, 150 when they killed him. And just because they killed him there, that delays their Blink Dagger for another like two minutes instead of him finishing it within like two waves. Like smart ganks like that. It, like IGV looked like shit last game, but this game they look so good. Like they're just doing everything right. And it's so easy to look awful in Dota. I'm sure it's the same in StarCraft in a lot of cases. Luzian looks bad. Um, I mean, or maybe you just don't true? get into that. Do you even get into bad like? So I mean, even... I personally am good at looking horrible in StarCraft. Okay. I mean, but are, is it if you're losing? Is it very easy to look just awful? You know, it isn't because you just fucking lose immediately. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> that's true. There isn't, there isn't like a drawn out process. Yeah, you don't get to respawn. You get no respawning, man. And in that regard, you know, yeah, no, you can have someone who just loses a dumb looking game, wins the next one, loses the dumb looking game, and then wins the next one. And okay, now you're tied two two, and you don't you don't think about it too much from that perspective. Mm -hmm. But you do have the benefit of getting um, hard resets at the end of every game. Yeah. Do you want to take a look at the word vision for IG, IGV and only their side? Ugh. The go radiant. Radiant. It always takes me a moment. I have to go radiant. Sounds good. And they're the green team. And who's the green team? IGV. Got it. Just the one oh, angry one. Oh my gosh, that ship is so good! Oh, oh my god, Zai with the incredible Echo Slam. Does it matter? Does it matter? It looks like the answer is no, it doesn't matter. Oh my god, dude, IGV is so far ahead. I would have thought that Echo Slam would have done so much more damage. God, he dies immediately. Pressing. I mean, look at the hero level. I mean, he's 8. He's level 8. And this is 17, 15, and 15. Wow. That was just a white. That was clean. Yep. Five and zero. Oh. That was an incredible fight. It, it was definitely very tough for EG though. I mean, they start off with a double stun. They comboed it up with Kunko abilities, and there was a great Echo Sum on three heroes. But that was pretty much the only big response. And they still do have a support Batrider. I mean, I, I kind of feel like what happened this game. I don't. Maybe EG practiced support Batrider a little bit and it worked. But I feel like this game they kind of felt forced into playing it based on how the draft went. Maybe. And then it also went bad. It's either that or that it's something they practiced and they did it this game and are probably not going to do it again. Because they now realize how like how weak it makes them in a certain vein. At least with Earthshaker. They can't do yeah. both Earthshaker and Bat. That's way too greedy. I mean, they're definitely going to get towered here. Yeah. It seems hard for that not to happen. Possibly Rax, but we'll see. Artesia yeah. has no Bats as well. They, they all got killed last fight. So it is up. Still not close to blink. I mean... 10 HP. It's no problem. They, they will not deny this. They'll deny maybe next push, but... I mean, anybody can backdoor this. I'm sure Quap will go for it at some point. They actually only have three here. I mean, you don't go now. You wait until the map's more spread out. Because they'll be thinking about it now. But... <laughs> what do you mean you don't go here? I go there. I'm like, guys, they may have made a mistake. <laughs> All in. Suicide but for the tower. Okay, so EG is really famous for just pulling out insane defenses for long periods of time. Yeah. Is this a possibility here? I mean, yeah. Lena's pretty good at defending high ground, but I don't. I feel like Earthshaker and Batrider 
don't quite have the same impact. And, and Visage, I have zero idea how to evaluate. Um, I would say Earthshaker Batrider are very, very good at defending high ground pushes. It's just the, uh, they just killed the tower. The problem is that um, they still need Blink on Bat. Once they get Blink on Bat, it's definitely more possible. But they've got no shrines either now, so they're, they're in a really bad spot. It's not as bad as last game was, um, certainly. <laughs> but it, it doesn't look great. Sumail's gonna get caught here, probably. He's got a haste, but he's gonna get and... X marks the spot. Oh, barely out, right, out of oh. range of X, and there's a huge echo! Oh. And then follow-up stun. Can they actually get any kills here? There's the lasso, nice, nice, and it looks like they're going to take out Co-op. Okay. No! He looks died, like died. Sumail died. Instantly. I could not follow all of that action. Who's who's alive? Who's alive? The, the crucial right, thing is they killed Quap right after she blinked. I think she blinked away, almost dying, and she blinked into fire maybe and died. Who got the kill? Um, it was crit, so it must have been like Firefly was on the ground and finished him off. So they got 3 for 2. That was super good. 2k gold swing. So much gold, holy shit. 5.5k experience, and that mostly went to Profit and a little bit to Lena. So Profit is now level 15. That right, I got a shitload too. Gives them more treants to feed. Just kidding. It's the better perk, almost. <laughs> um, it helps you push so much faster because you cast Nature's Call twice and you have like 18 treants. It's like insane compared to having 10. Plus four treants summoned. I love the 250 health perk. It is just yeah. so nice. I think you have to get that one because otherwise you have HP problems in the mid game. Because there's yeah. not really a lot of items that like. Yeah, make yeah. Grow better and give you HP. Except for like Atos, but it's not really a good profit item. It's like a secondary sprout. Who cares? Sit there. Sit there again. You can still cast spells on me, but I'm gonna make sure you're not moving too fast. Four staffs, both in the queue for the two supports on EG for the maximum pickoffs. And are they just gonna go go for it? Nice. I like this going straight for the vitality booster. On, oh, on Lena? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's at her point booster, so. Yeah, just trying to make sure. Absolutely positive that you can stay alive. I'm always so impressed when I watch any team after they win a fight take an opportunity to be active and push out toward to kill a tower, because I always feel like I need to win two fights or something like that to make influence. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, you definitely don't have to. I mean, there's a lot, it's a lot easier to take little opportunities if everybody's on the same page and goes really fast. It's a big difference. Almost eggs on Centaur. If he just... Uh, he's always going to go in first, but it'll reduce a lot of damage. What does uh, the Aghanims on Centaur Warrunner do? Uh, makes everybody phase, like I said, over trees, up oh, cliffs. Oh, that's right. And it also reduces damage to take by 40% for the duration. So that's very good. You can use it against, like, Chronosphere or things like that to try to save your allies. Dude, Weaver is 10 and 0 and 9. Yeah. Doesn't have a Desolator yet. Does it even matter? This is just you don't, you don't so have to. much damage. You just adjust based on the game. Oh, oh, there's a stun. There's a stun. Oh, goodbye, Weaver. Goodbye. Maybe goodbye. Maybe goodbye. No. Sumail waited way too long. He ultied after the Orchid finished, so he didn't take bonus damage. If he had ultied before the Orchid finished, then he would have. that would have been Aegis kill. But now they didn't oh. even get that. He's full HP again. That was a pretty big mistake. It was a really ghetto gank, but they ex like it took a lot of work to, to make that gank work. <laughs> and they almost did it. They just slightly misexecuted. Wow, these bats are so good against Serpent Wars. Yeah, that's actually amazing. Yeah, I've never seen that before. That was incredible. Oh, we got an X. Oh, we dodged. Nice. Or maybe it was Almost pushed into the tier 3 at the bottom. So impressive to me whenever anyone does something like that. It's oh, so that's amazing. It's really good. Transfer there too. And Nish Prophet even queuing up the Maelstrom to deal a little extra wave clear damage. Tango. I'll slap you, I swear. Wait, really? Dyer's Courier is dead? Oh, that sucks. Uh, and Maybe it was flying to Prophet or something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> Whose fault was it? Ooh, man, I'm like super duper wrong in this. One of the predictions? Oh yeah, we got real right. What did we say? The <laughs> easiest predictions in Lina. the history of predictions. Oh Lina my god. Will, Lino will go out of control this game. Lena, oh my god. Lena, oh I play Lena, therefore she's gonna do it. Wow. Goodbye, Batrider. Goodbye, Visage. Oh my goodness.
Leaving the base when you're losing this badly, not a good idea. I, I mean, like at, at the same time, EG did go one on one last round, they went one on one this round. You only need to be into the top four in order to be in good position in your groups, so. Yeah, but you know, the worse you do the, if, if you do like worst of the top half, then you're gonna have to play against the first seed, which increases your chances of going right into lower bracket after the first round. But I think EG is good enough that honestly, it's not that big of a deal, Yeah. as long as they don't start in lower bracket like they have at some previous tournaments. Like uh, Boston, they started in lower bracket just barely, I believe, and they had to play against, uh, what, uh, Wings? Or maybe it's the other way around, they were upper bracket, I can't remember. Something like that. I think they've definitely looked really refined so far, but obviously this game is just a really, an, an example of probably um, drafting the wrong heroes. Pick. Yeah. Gosh, that is amazing that he can find time to sneak down here and do this. I mean, the birds are so good against the wars, that is amazing. Glyph isn't up. Uh, Tower falls, though. That's painful. And he's going back. Yeah, this is this is the best that that EG can do right now. Split pushing. That's very impressive. They've been able to apply enough pressure even in the midst of all this horridness. Yep. Profit ulti, shadow blade. It's the rat hero, man. Rat it's hero the, number it's one. It's the rat hero we deserve. This so looks like Crit's on the hunt, on the lookout for any humans, using the flying ability to see over the trees. Which is something that I didn't value when I yeah. started off, right? You don't really care about vision. I feel like the more you play any game, the more you just want to see what the hell they're doing. Mm -hmm. You don't care about getting all the money. You just want to see what he's doing. You just want to kill him for it. How far away is he from Maelstrom? He's getting relatively close. Oh. Goodbye again. Ooh, that's a lot Gosh. of damage. Three and ten on Sumail. Two and nine on Zai. That means that Sumail is not going to get any fantasy points. What? Oh, RTZ missed micro big time. Uh -oh. That was actually a huge mistake. He 100% well, missed, missed micro it. Right there. <laughs> he was trying to micro his birds and he controlled this hero. And he ran outside. He ran outside the base. That's going to get them racks guaranteed. That's such a big mistake. And he lost his bats for 30 seconds. Uh, he's got oh. two left. Two bats. But... That was huge error by RTC. So painful. Wow. Good stuff. Fortuitous placement. Alright, this is a big kill. I think kill Kunkka. Uh, looks like maybe buyback on RTZ. One rack still remains, and it looks like nobody's dying except for Zai again. Smail falls, rebuys. Universe falls, rebuys. Arteez is barely living here. And hey! Paparazzi finding targets left and right, man. They've gotten only Shadow Shaman. That is so well coordinated. And that's it, that's GG, dude. Ooh, what a game, man. Nope, Smell might get this kill. Nope. I think that was a good choice to ulti the creep, because he probably wouldn't have gotten. Ooh, I got a lot of things incorrect on this one. It doesn't even say correct or incorrect for most of mine. It just says in That's progress. Good. That's uh, it's painful. How am I supposed to get points if I can only get the first one, dude? What the heck? I'm going right. to try restarting Dota. Maybe that'll do it. All right, what do we have here? I'm going to go look at the standings really quickly. Me in the group stage. So IG is 1-1 for both sets now, which is pretty bad for them. Liquid's at 4-0. They've won both of their sets. Yeah, I heard that Liquid was just dominant. I actually thought EG would have the better games, personally. Well, I feel like EG, it, when they pick lineups that are weird, like I remember what, whatever the tournament was that was right before this. Manila? Mm. No, not Manila. I don't know which one it was. It uh, Mars. The Mars Dota 2 League thing. Okay. Where MDL. Yeah. Um, Sumail picked like Ancient Apparition mid, which felt odd. I mean, I have no idea if he even can play mid, but I mean, it's like hero picks like that I've seen consistently. Mm -hmm. He did that at uh, Kiev crazy. as well, I think. Maybe it was Kiev. Maybe a different tournament. I can't remember. It's going to be even harder. Remember, the tournament's next year with 11 majors and 11 minors. It's a lot of tournaments. 
and each one has to have six regional qualifiers too. Yeah. I think majors as well or minors as well. So it's like very good for for underrepresented scenes. If you're like a C or CIS Dota player right now, I think you're going to be pretty happy. Let's see if there's any of the greatest heroes in the game in these games. Oh, we got a troll game and the uh, VP one. This is like standard VP draft though, sniper troll. <laughs> they do this stuff all the time. Yeah, let's hop in. We got the bristleback. I saw the bristleback was the lowest, sir, the second lowest win rate in 5k and up games. Really? Hmm. On Dota buff, yeah. Surprise the hell out of me. Oh, dude, we came in at the perfect time. Look at VP go. Oh my god. Well, they won the fight. Alright, what is the current standing in this game? VP ahead by 5k gold. VP has knocked down a lot of towers. Not as many as Execration by one. Like the Mask of Madness on Troll, it looks really effective. Mask Even Madness more is insane, man. I think that was one of the best items. Like, Mask of Madness on Luna is ridiculous. Yeah, that one's pretty disgusting. Pretty much most carries, it's really crazy. All right, this is going to be a dead Bristol if they find him in time. Oh, nope, too late. No break from Silver Edge now. If he hit the break, he'd be way dead already. He should. He really doesn't care about hitting him from the front. All right, now he's dead. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that is a low cooldown. They actually just can't kill him. Oh my god, he's going to live. What the nope. f- are you serious with this shit? Oh my god, Lotus Horse sent his arm back. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, man. He has Solar Crest as well, so he was dodging a lot of hits. And he yeah. also has Crimson Guard, so he was yeah, guaranteed damage Yeah, and Pipe of Insight, block. yeah. Does Troll just have a naturally far lower attack damage? Actually, not really. He does build a lot more stats, which is usually a little more damage light. It's like moderate damage. Um, yeah. But usually he'll pick up like a Daedalus late game or something to amp that up. So And, and especially because he attacks so rapidly, things like damage block work efficiently. Because if you attack often, the damage block will will, will, bo will block more of your hits yeah. percentage because you'll spend more money on other items. If that makes sense. More attack speed. Yeah, if you spend yeah. all your money on attack speed, then you want your opponents to like damage block more. Currently glancing over at the infamous secret game. Actually, let me just go ahead and set this to the... Stream C main caster cam. Yeah. Someone who uses the big back zoomies. <laughs> Damn, that is zoomed back. Yeah, looking at it, it looks like the... Or Infamous is actually slightly ahead in terms of gold, but they do have an anti-mage just farming like crazy. Man, I need to go get a little bit more coffee. Are you sure, Sean? Is this a good idea? Yeah, yeah, it's a great idea. I'm actually... I'm trying to exercise more, man. I'm trying to get up and be productive in the morning. And this combination of being an adult with trying to be a healthy adult, it's just hard on the body, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Oh my goodness. And dude, Venomancer doesn't even oh. manage to deal the damage on the sniper. That's okay, dude. That was a great combo. Nailed everybody. I think sniper is dead. Oh, we got him. Excretion fought that so well. The Venno swinging around made a big difference. Uh, does he have Blink? No, actually, he walked all the way around and forced in. Basically, when Venno ults you, it is time to leave. And by hitting four people with that, Holy it God. allowed them to, to chase and pursue. And then VP kind of spread out was the other issue. Like, some went northwest and some went nor near the ancient spot. So it made it easier to um, take a good fight. God, are they going to win this game? Yeah, I was going to say, VP is one of the teams that, you know, when I first started watching and playing a lot more Dota 2, they just were so consistently at the top and were so talked about. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what's happening? Oh, the Nether War goes down. Coddle goes down. Will Bristleback go down? I highly doubt it. Oh my god, Coddle got away! Nope, no, Kyle's dead. They did that perfect. Uh, if no one was hitting Bristle in that fight... 
Like, it would have been completely different, but instead he killed, used BKB to guarantee kills on the Nyx, and I don't know if he killed hmm. the Coddle, I think somebody else did. But, um, the, uh, the Pugna and the Nyx, basically. The two heroes that actually matter. Because Bristol oh has no, like, god. carry items this game. Oh my god, can we watch OG versus DC? Yeah, sure. Oh, we draft, yes, points, yes. Yes, yes, draft points, yes. Dude, OG is... I mean, if I were forced to pick a, like, team I think is going to win, I w it would just be OG because they just only seem to win. <laughs> they yeah. just win so the much. They don't win TIs, dude. That's fine. They're going to break the... Oh, you know what? Death to Digital Chaos. Banning Phantom Lancer. Can't, I can't believe you've done this. Can't you support Abed, the uh, 10k MMR gamer? Dude, 10k gamers are dime a dozen. Just look at Twitch chat. That's true. Uh, oh my gosh. What is what is it that's making Silencer good in this particular patch? Um, his uh, his abilities are really strong. Um, Curse of the Silence good. Uh, he basically has two nukes by level two, and Last Word does 150 damage at level one. It's a 30 second cooldown, but so and he's, he's just really strong at the lane. Um, he can also get his uh, his orb, his glaives, which if you use it on people, then they you don't aggro creeps. So that's pretty good for zoning. But oh, I think Dubu usually maxes just Curse and Last Word, at least according to the last game that I watched him play today. Yeah. And then, then you have Global Silence, which beats a bunch of important heroes. And if yeah, you combo I mean, with like Silence Batrider, great. Yeah. So it just helps you get an edge in lane and in the mid game. And he gets he's got really good stack gain, and you steal int from oh, people dude. if they die. It's so cool to just see the respect that's given to Abed when it's like Meepo Bam seem pretty common when Abed's around. Yeah. Let's just make sure he doesn't get him. Could work. This game, maybe. With Silencer ulti and Batrider, maybe. Ten seconds remaining. I'm curious to see how OG deals with this, though. Opening Slardar is a bit Five seconds remaining. rare. Um, it's definitely good against Roche. But well, why do you think it's rare? Because, I mean, it, as a complete newbie when it comes to high-level drafting, I would think that he is a very non-committal pick. He's a relatively solid initiator with good escape and he is able to help with uh you know detecting invisibles good against roche he's just he's just a nice non-committal man it's exactly true um he's just he's just been nerfed a, a decent amount of times and teams have just started favoring other heroes instead is basically what happened um so i would say he's he's still good it's just i wouldn't see him as a yes let's open up with a slaughter as my as my first pick situation. Oh yes, it actually shows. Oh, if you look right in the middle screen, do you see where it says the old? It has the highlights of the old picks and bands. In the last drafting, it wouldn't show the arrows, so you couldn't actually. You, you basically just didn't know unless you would do it based on the patterns of the last picks. You wouldn't know who actually had first pick. So it was a silencer opener. So I'm very happy the Valve updated that because now I know who has first pick, even if it's way past first pick. Thank God, and I don't have to use like deductive reasoning to figure it out. I'm so pleased right now. Okay, so Silencer is the first pick. <laughs> they responded Slardar Keeper. I could argue that Slardar is better at, is good at bullying Silencer at level one because he won't cast that many spells, so Curse isn't a big deal. If he gets um, Silenced, it's not a big deal because he's only going to basically cast yeah. like Sprint and Stun. Um, and he also has better base stats and higher armor by far, so he can probably bully a Silencer, is my initial thought. But really, I, I don't know. It could go oh, lots of different ways. Oh, Anon Invoker. Yes. Yes. You know, I've still never played Invoker, not once. Isn't that insane? It's really not. No, you should isn't that probably. Just, isn't that crazy? I don't know if you're ready. I'm not. I've, I mean, I actually have no urge to play Invoker. I'm not interested in him. He, he doesn't appeal to me as a character. Five okay. It's definitely popular. He used to be really bad back in Dota 1 and many, many different occasions. A Quap, eh? Abed, uh, Quap. I mean, this seems, this seems relatively modest in terms of... Well, Interesting modest, word I choice. Guess, I guess I'd say orthodox. These picks have been very common yeah. in the last few... Yep. So I'd say Quap is kind of cool here because um, she's good at punishing opponents. Woo! Show snipe! Illusions. <laughs> illusions! I love illusions! I don't know why I'm so drawn to them! Ah. 
Uh, one of Chaos Knight's problems, he, does, he doesn't push very well, so I think him with Keeper is, is a good thing to have. Yeah, he also doesn't farm very well. Oh, hell yeah, who doesn't love Sven? Yeah, Chaos Knight, like, the fact that he ha does single target damage feels That's... like he's slow in terms of being able to get powered up. Um, Caudal can amp his mana, though, which is good, because... He has mana problems, so he can cast more often. Chaos Bolt cooldown is 10, so that means with a, Be like level, a half. We'll say level 2 Chakra Magic or something, it would go down to, like, what, uh, 6 seconds, which is pretty good. So you could definitely abuse the offlane a little bit with Chakra and Chaos Bolt. Um, he's very bad against AoE, though, and DC has basically ruined his life by picking Sven, in my opinion. What is okay? So, what is a hero that is great at shutting? <clears throat> excuse me, shutting down Sven. Um, troll can work. Uh, anything that can kite him. Basically, uh, initiators are big. Um, if you can basically start a fight, disabling Sven's blink dagger, and you know approximately where he is, and he's kind of in the middle of everybody, ideally, then he's kind of bad. He's just pretty bad. But if if he can like ulti. Blink and stun somebody and pop BKB, you're gonna get lose at least one hero almost always. So if you just make sure he keeps taking damage, and that everybody just stays a little bit away from him, he's just a bad hero. It, it, it's the easy way to say it. But obviously, getting that circumstance is kind of rare. He's kind of like Wraith King, in that way. Like if you think about the two heroes together, they're very similar in how they play. You blink, you stun a guy, and you try to kill him before they become unstunned. And if that doesn't work, you're gonna be in some shit for like eight seconds at least. So you just gotta stay away. Um, if they can like reinitiate, if they can drain his mana, things like that, it'll it'll make it pretty, huh. it'll make a good situation for them. I always see Sand King picked first, man. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to see him wait this long. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a Boba Sand King. Um, it's more AOE. I think Chaos Knight is now a bad pick. I, I breathe, I'm not a big fan of Chaos Knight as a fourth pick, but I think it's because OG does really prefer um, illusion heroes, um, especially because they can push lanes, so he'll probably get Manta at some point and use that to push lanes. So, but likely they'll need it. another roaming support uh, type hero to help. It, it could be support, night. could be offlane, depends where which way Slardar is played. Sure. Um, Earth Spirit, maybe? Okay. So offlane Bristle. Ah. Bristle is. Actually, Sven is the counter to Bristle back, which makes this weird. Sven is one of the counters, because he can amp up his team's armor, which makes Bristle worse. But at least Bristle can be the focus of the fights, I guess. It feels like Invoker and Bristleback, on their own, are very reasonable at pushing out lanes some. And yes. then you have the Chaos Knight there, who will hopefully be able to either get the space he needs to farm, or can also do some pushing later, so... Yeah, um... Yeah. I think they maybe they needed Bristol because they needed something. I don't know. It seems like the OG draft was kind of... I feel like they're on the back foot through most of the draft. And I'm going to maybe blame Slardar for that. But we'll see. Because if they do... They actually do have a buttload of minus armor right now. Between Chaos Knight, Slardar, and Bristleback. Mostly Slardar, Chaos Knight. I could definitely see like them instantly killing many heroes if they if they can. Do you have two Slardars on your screen? No, is that just me? Okay. I heard about this bug when I was listening to the initial drafts this morning. I heard that for some people you see. Oh, you've got it too. Look at his hands. Look at oh, his hands. shit. Look, there's two of them coming out. Yeah, because it shows the base model. And then um, oh, the... when you choose your skin, it loads the skin. So right now we have Bat Rider <laughs> mating with a Bat Rider. Look oh, at damn. that. Oh. oh, yeah, they are, dude. Mantas oh, and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, excellent. Good time. All right, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to get some water, and I am going to change pants. Because wow. it's getting hot in here. Okay. I don't have my headphones in. It doesn't matter what you say to me. I need to take my pants off right now. I need uh, to put on different pants. Sean, take off okay. your pants. Time of first tower destruction. 8 to 11. Which team will win? OG. Oh, number of teleport stuns canceled. There will be exactly one. What other person will be? Uh, we have Slardar. We have... Three to four. I'm the fucking best. All right. Wow, 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 wow. 
All right, Kevin, the pants are coming off right now. Right now, Kevin. It's very hot in the room, Kevin. Ah, oh, that's nice. Oh, let's get these power shorts on, man.